Garth Fagan was born on May 3rd in 1940 in Kingston, Jamaica. His father, S.W. Fagan, was educated at Oxford University and was also the former Chief of Education Officer of Jamaica. Garth Fagan discovered his interest in the arts when he took a gymnastics class at a young age. However, his father was not supportive of his passion and discouraged him from pursuing it. When Garth Fagan attended Excelsior High School, he studied with Ivy Baxter at the Jamaica National Dance Company. While attending this company, he performed throughout Latin America and even danced at the inauguration of Cuban President Fidel Castro in 1959. In 1960, Garth Fagan moved to the United States at the age of 20. Fagan attended Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan with the intended major of psychology. It was not until Garth Fagan received his master's degree in psychology that he realized dance was his true passion. While in Detroit, Fagan worked at several dance companies until he suffered from a back injury and moved to Rochester in 1970. In 1970, he became a professor at the State University of New York at Brockport. During his time in Rochester, Garth Fagan choreographed for the Dance Theater of Harlem, the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater, and the Limon Dance Company. Garth Fagan has said that he not only studied the works of classics, such as Isadora Duncan and Martha Graham, but he was also influenced by Caribbean and West African dances. Garth Fagan founded his company, Bottom of the Bucket, in 1970 as well. Later, the name was changed to the Garth Fagan Dance Company. While Garth Fagan's father discouraged him from his passion as a child, after he saw his son's company perform, he said, If I had known that your work would have cultural significance, then I would have never fought you as hard as I did. Garth Fagan recounts this memory in this interview. Knew everything. And um, he showed up with seven people, came backstage, sweetness and light. My son, the choreographer, what a wonderful show. And my dancers are looking at me and saying, you said your dad was so tough. What a lovely man. <laughs> And he fessed up right there and then that had I told him that my work would have intellectual stamina and cultural significance, he never would have fought me as hard as he did. The mission statement of Garth Fagan's company is to conduct cultural, educational, and charitable activities, including the furtherance of the founding artistic director's vision, production of dance theater of the highest quality, development of a new work, by the founding artistic director, development of future dancers, and the expansion of audiences. His dance company is currently in its 45th season and is well known worldwide. Children, teenagers, and adults are able to take classes at the Garth Fagan Dance School. Current and former members of the Garth Fagan Dance Company teach these classes. In 2009, his company's piece, Mudan, was named third of the top six dance watching moments of 2009. Garth Fagan's dancers often stay with the company for up to 30 years. It is unusual for dancers to stay with one company for this long and it is a true testament that his dancers truly love him and his company. Garth Fagan's dance company is known for its modern style with long fluid movements. He also utilizes stillness to punctuate action and sustained extensions to show off his dancer's strength and stamina. His dancers wear very simple, tight costumes to ensure that their long lines will be seen. This is a clip of Garth Fagan's dance company.
Garth Fagan is also known for his work appearing to be autobiographical or include themes of personal relevance. For example, his untitled 1977 work chronicles the dissolution of his marriage by showing a couple beginning with affection and passion but eventually drifting apart due to inevitable obstacles. Griot, New York is about his experience while living in poverty when he moved to New York City and the piece Moth Dreams celebrates his childhood and adolescence as well as his great relationship with his mother. Today, Garth Fagan is divorced and has two children and resides in Rochester. Just over a week ago, on November 4th, Garth Fagan's dance company performed at the Joyce Theater to celebrate their 45th anniversary, but also in a tribute to Joffrey Holder, a dear friend of Garth Fagan who passed away the year before. The tribute was a fantastic commemoration of dance set with new lighting and an edited voiceover drawn from a commemorative essay by Mr. Holder's son, Leo. The piece was titled Joffrey Holder, Life Fit, Bucknall. In Trinidad, where Mr. Holder was born, Bucknall describes a good party and Fagan felt that this also described his dear friend, Mr. Holder. One of the most influential shows that Garth Fagan worked on was The Lion King. In 1996, Disney approached Garth Fagan about creating choreography for a new Broadway musical based on the animated film The Lion King. Garth Fagan was hesitant at first because his choreography was not aimed at children and he had never seen The Lion King. The film tells the story of a lion cub Simba who loses his father at a young age and runs away because he believes it is his fault. Simba is confronted by enemies such as three evil hyenas, but he also makes unlikely friends along the way, such as a wise baboon and a warthog. Simba decides to return home and fights his evil uncle Scar to save his pack and become the king of the African savanna. After viewing The Lion King for the first time, Garth Fagan exclaimed, it was quite unlike anything I had thought Disney was doing, and I fell madly in love with it. After, Garth Fagan agreed to work on the production. He was allowed to see the musical's costume sketches and puppets that were designed by Julie Taymor, and his vision for the show emerged. Choreographing for The Lion King proved to be a challenge for Garth Fagan for several reasons. The first challenge was working around the elaborate set. During the show, Pride Rock rises out of the stage and the dancers must move around it. While working through this issue, Garth Fagan said, When Pride Rock comes out of the earth, there's a big hole down there. So I had to make changes. It was a good lesson. It taught me to overcome restrictions. The next problem was choreographing for dancers who were wearing elaborate headdresses and other dancers who were working with long poles. Julie and Garth worked closely together to ensure that the dancers could still perform to their full capacity. Therefore, there were many changes to the original costume designs. For example, the gazelles were originally wearing paraphernalia on their backs, but these were ultimately dropped. The choreography was not only challenging for Fagan to produce, but also for the dancers to execute. They had to learn to perform moves such as whipping their heads quickly without their headdresses falling off. There were often mishaps during rehearsal, but Garth Fagan recounts on this saying, we laughed all the way through because sometimes we discovered things we hadn't planned on. Other challenges were showing each animal's personality through the choreography. The dancers had to embody their animals using long fluid motions. The Lion King is also one of the first shows in which the dancers interacted with the audience by dancing in stage boxes and proceeding down the aisles while going to the stage. As of September 2014, The Lion King surpassed The Phantom of the Opera as the most successful box office total with a total of $6.2 billion. This total only includes box office receipts. Therefore, merchandise for the film, such as posters, CDs, and other items, have grossed a total of $423 million on top of that $6.2 billion. 
Executive producers also worked hard to keep ticket prices relatively low. For example, the highest price at The Lion King was $197.50. However, the highest price at Wicked was $300, and the highest price for the Book of Mormon was $477. Executive Vice President and Managing Director at Disney Theatrical Group once said, We're never going to be the top price. We're never going to have the highest VIP price. We're not in this for tomorrow afternoon. We're in it for however many years we've got, and we're trying to be moderate. One factor that helped attribute to the show's success is that it can be a family affair. The show is appealing to all ages, spanning from grandparents to small children. Everyone takes something different away from the show. Here's a clip from The Lion King on Broadway. The Lion King has won a total of six 1998 Tony Awards, Best Musical, Best Scenic Design, Best Costume Design, Best Lighting Design, Best Choreography, and Best Direction of a Musical. Julie Taymor was the first woman to win Best Costume Design. The Lion King has also earned more than 70 major arts awards. Fagan won the Best Choreography Tony Award and garnered fame that far surpassed his considerable reputation as a contemporary choreographer. He won several awards after, such as the 1998 Drama Desk Award, the 1998 Outer Critics Award, and the 2000 Lawrence Oliver Award. Garth Fagan is an extraordinary choreographer, and his work for The Lion King has been performed for over 17 years. He is currently residing in Rochester and is still deeply involved with his dance company.